We created our own NBA universe. Today is episode like five, I think. Let's get into it. All right, so y'all know I'm always in the comments section taking advice about different teams and what they should do and what they shouldn't do. The first thing we got to do at the start of this episode is trade Shaquille O'Neal. The Bucks, the team they use on, um, is a team. Oh, we got to go through the lottery and all of it. We got a lot of stuff to do. But uh, the Bucks, a team that we were excited about, have not lived up to any hype at all. They've made the playoffs, I think, once, maybe twice, and never made it past the first round. He is 38 years old. Now, he's still good at 38, but he's 38 year, years old on the last year of his deal. It seems like this could be the end of his career. So he want to go out there and try to go get a championship. And there's one team that's been close-ish that maybe he is the determined factor to get them over the hump. Here's a draft lottery. This is the year that we have Giannis and company um, a part of it. Not the greatest draft class, but Giannis is in it. The winner of the Giannis sweepstakes are the Houston Rockets. And they got one and three. The Houston Rockets got one and three. They had a 15% chance, and they they get that 15% chance, and they end up with Giannis if they decide to do the right thing. You you never really know in these circumstances exactly what the GM is thinking. Uh, so this team needs help desperately. They've drafted the Murrays over the last couple seasons, um, and now they're going to have Giannis to add to the thing. Jalen Johnson had a year where he was immaculate. Sorry, about two and a half years where he was just really good, uh, and he's probably going to get paid because of it. Either way, this is the NBA draft. So let's make this uh, this Shaq trade. Let's make the Shaq trade. He's only an 86 overall at this point in his career. This team, the Minnesota Timberwolves, are a team that makes sense. But Ben Wallace, the guy I was going to use in this trade, is a free agent. So that is kind of it. The numbers were matching. And so if that's the case, there's not a lot of teams that can really afford the trade for Shaq. Because Shaq's contract is $18 million. And that's one of the biggest contracts in all of ball right now. All right, either way, uh, let's go see Giannis get drafted and see who else is in this lottery. The next draft class we load up is Steph Curry's draft class, by the way. Uh, so that's going to be fun. Here we go. First overall pick is Rudy Gobert. I cannot believe the amount of teams that have fumbled first overall picks. Thaddeus Young went first overall one year. I mean, Rudy Gobert is probably going to be really good, do not get me wrong. But he's not Giannis. So the second overall pick, is this the Giannis pick? It is. Oh, wait. Wait, what did, I, what did I think? Oh, I was looking at the Rock Raptors instead of the Rockets. The Rockets got the two picks. Okay, so he does end up in Toronto like we thought, but we the, Rap, the Rockets just just absolutely fumbled an all-time great. Who's on their team? I don't even remember. It's Boozer. It's Steve Franchise. It's Cam Thomas. Uh, did they avoid Giannis because he's probably a power forward? Oh, they got him in small forward, so you can't even say that. All right, third overall pick is Otto Porter. That stays true. Fourth overall pick is Kurt, auto-generated guy. Victor Oladipo is next. This is not a very good draft class. I think we can go through it and just look at the results, actually. So CJ McCollum goes six. A lot of auto-generated du dudes. Uh, Nerlens Noel, uh, Trey Burke is there, Cody Zeller. Yeah, this is not this is not a very good draft class. Uh, but you do, you do have Giannis and Seth Curry in the league a year before his, his uh, brother. Nico Melli is in the league, but the, yeah, this is not a draft class that we should care too much about. Other than the fact that Nicola, I'm sorry, not Nicola, but other than the fact that we got Giannis in the league now. The Jazz picked up Corey Brewer, who's an 82 overall right now. That's actually pretty clutch. If you don't know, they have Luka Doncic and they also have Kobe Bean Bryant. So to have a wing that is also pretty good defensively really helps them there. Did they spend any more money, Utah Jazz? It don't like they did it to get anybody significant, if that's the case. Tiago Splitter is back, right? He's, he was there last season. He's not a bad guy to bring back as a backup. Actually, he might even start on that roster. Uh, not a lot of player movement, and that's another thing we will address today. Oh, my God. Are we entering a new era? Whoa, we're in the modern era, ladies and gentlemen. We're no longer, what was it, the Kobe era? Was it called the Kobe era? We're no longer in that era. Instead, we're in the modern era. And the modern era sees the draft class of Harden, Blake Griffin, Tyreek Evans, uh, Jer Henderson, Jeff Teague, Steph Curry is still at seven-ish. Um, that's interesting. I wonder if he's going to climb up the ranks there. A, a pretty decent draft class. Uh, definitely got some some heavy hitters here with Drew Holiday and all of the, a lot of Hall NBA appearances. Some Hall of Famers in this draft class. I'm excited about it. DeMar DeRose is down there as well. Okay, okay. We might see some really good players go very late in the draft, which I'm cool with. All right, so we're going to simulate a little bit and uh, get to around the deadline, see what's going on around the league, and maybe see some big player movements. 
maybe see some people, some teams selling. I will say this is the last year of the Indiana Pacers currently constructed. They've always been a really good regular season team and fumble in the playoffs. And since this is episode five, right? So that means it's been eight years, nine years of them being uh, mediocre come playoff time. That's a way more than enough time to say, hey, we've seen this integration of the team. We want to do something different. So they are on the hot seat collectively. The Bucks are selling, ladies and gentlemen. And the first trade we're going to do is Shea for three first round picks and a young Austin Rivers. He's in year two. He's only 21 years old. And this version of Austin Rivers has the potential to be a lot better than the real version of him. Um, three first round picks. And then for roster filler stuff, uh, Richard Jefferson, I'm sorry, Richard Hamilton is going with Boom, the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm sorry, Bucks fans. It is your time. Steve Nash is 36. Shaq is 38. RJ is 30. And y'all are mediocre at 19 and 27. So you got the big piece out of the way. Let's see if we can find any takers for these. Like these contracts are huge for the sake of like where the NBA is right now. So can we find a team that they could take $13 million of an aging Steve Nash? But also the team has to be good. Like no team is taking that type of money if they are close to at least being solid. This Atlanta Hawks team needs a point guard desperately. He's 36, so maybe he doesn't fit the timeline. But contractually, they don't really got nothing outside of Rashard Lewis. And you kind of want Rashard Lewis right now, even though he's on the last year of his deal. He's really good. 50, 40, 90. Sheesh. One future lottery protected pick for Steve Nash is basically where the value is at right now. You get it back a young Isaiah Thomas at 25 years old. You also get back uh, Jim uh, Tim Thomas, who... It's not bad. He's he's actually pretty solid, but he's an expendable piece right now in this universe for the Orlando Magic, and they need a point guard because they are starting Jamal Crawford, who's obviously pretty solid, but more is uh, he's probably better as a backup versus a starter. Uh, so that like I wanted to try to get you some young talent, and you know what, you might be able to get this guy as well just cause because you want another body. You know what, you got it. There you go, two young pieces, one first round pick for Steve Nash. Everybody does accept the trade. Boom. Next, you got to find a, a place for Richard Jefferson, who was, whoa, how many threes is that? Oh, only 17. Bro, I saw that he's shooting 65% from three. Uh, yeah, he might, I mean, he's, on, he's 30 and under contract for four years. He's got an extreme amount of value, Bucks fans. Y'all might be able to walk out of here with a lot of first round capital for these players. The real question is, what team has the money to match it? Because he's making a total of 14 mil a year, which actually ain't as bad as it could be. So I think we might be able to find a suitor pretty easily. The Miami Heat are probably our suitors. They've been trying to find a way to make sure that Kimball Walker is the starting point guard over there. Um, Stephon Marbury comes back to just end the rest of his contract here. You also want to get a 21-year-old Marquise Chris in this deal. Uh, hope that he can blossom into something. Only thing is you keep giving away players. I mean, it's you got a Fred Van Vliet on a two-way. Can we give Freddie like some minutes now that y'all not gonna be good? Two first rounders go the opposite direction, boom. Shaq is the one that's kind of impossible to move, but he's gonna be playing along Stefan Marbury and Tim Thomas. So, you know, he's 38. Part of me wants to like stretch his contract. So I might do that for the sake of Shaq having an opportunity to play. Cause at 20 million, there's nobody willing to take a 38 year old Shaquille O'Neal. So you know what, Shaq, you're being stretched. Go find a way. And now the Bucks look completely different and they should probably prioritize being younger. So Chris Goodrich, I thought, wasn't there something where you could say like, oh yeah, steer younger versus old. Go go all in on your young players. Does that change the rotation? Yes, uh, dr quite dramatically, I'm gonna add. Uh, well, all of the old people coming off the bench, do it, do it. Let, let Austin Rivers turn into who he could be. Let Jacob Tucker, who hasn't played a single minute yet in his NBA career, turn into something. You know, I don't know if there's any other trades to be done at this deadline. Uh, some of the bigger contracts are so hard to move. This offseason, for sure, we're going to be moving Dirk. He has yet to make an He made one playoff appearance. That's just not good enough for Dirk as a talent. This team is dreadful, but his $20 plus million plus a year is a lot harder to trade now. I've been trying to figure it out to try to make a three-teamer. Um, and you know what? I'm going to keep pushing that right now. I'm, I'm going to spend a couple more minutes trying to figure out the team that we could potentially make it happen. It's just, it's tough. There's nothing there right now. So we're going to go to the end of the regular season. Dirk, your off season will be you getting traded to a, a specific team. I don't know what team that is just yet, but team. LeBron James is the MVP of the league. That is number two, if I'm not mistaken. Number three, uh, three consecutive. So shout out to LeBron. 
Victor Ladipo wins Rookie of the Year as the fifth overall pick, not Giannis, which is very interesting. Uh, 17, 4, and 3 for him. Jose Calderon is sixth man of the year. Tim Duncan was DPOY. It's, at this point, it's just becoming malpractice. The man has won seven in the last, what, eight seasons. Like, he's doing his thing. Uh, uh, ben Simmons wins most improved player. Rookie of the year a few years ago, and now he is the most improved. The Boston Celtics got him, got them one. He also hit a three, the first three of his NBA career, so shout out to him. Larry Brown's coach of the year, executive of the year goes to Willie Cohen's. I don't know who you are, Willie, but apparently you did something really, really nice. First team, second team, third team, defensive teams, rookie teams. Uh, Giannis averages 11, 5, and 4, so really good numbers from Giannis. He probably was 4 or 5 from 3. Yep, maybe you should shoot more. If you're going to shoot 80%, maybe you should shoot just a little bit more. Alex Caruso also makes All-NBA team. Uh, wow, those splits don't tell me anything. Former first overall pick, Rudy Gobert averages uh, 8 and 6. And here are the second team, and we're ready for the playoffs. Let's figure out exactly how things ended. The Chicago Bulls are the one seed. The Kevins and Klay Thompson, they got three, four ninety overall players. Can they get it done again? I guess only time will tell. The Washington Wizards are another team that has been consistently good and also has a few championships in the series. The Boston Celtics two years ago were really bad. Now they're back to being good. Um, we made them trade Wally Zerviak for Paul Pierce, and he's been nice for them. Ben Simmons, of course, is blossoming into a, a different player. And then Chauncey's been good. And Zebo, Zebo almost been a double-double machine this whole series. So shout out to him. At the bottom of all of this, the Milwaukee Bucks are the worst team in the East at least. Let's see how these rookies play. That's not too bad for Jacob, Jacob Tucker. Austin Rivers averages 10. Not too bad for him. Deshaun Stevenson, who's been around a little bit at the age of 30. He, he was all right, I guess. Marquise Chris, uh, 9 and 8. And uh, did you really care? Probably not. Shaq just resigned. So he just resigned for the minimum. Instead of going to a contending team, he just said, Milwaukee, this this city is, I'm here for you. And the Bucks are like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll bring you back. Hey, we're not um, paying you $20 million, even though you did because you stretched this contract. Out West, the Grizzlies traded away Kobe a couple of seasons ago and still are recovering. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon is is okay, I'm assuming. Yeah, he's okay. Uh, James Booknight, really good. Uh, but he's also 27, so he's a little bit older than I remember. And yeah, there's still a ways away. But this is the Steph Curry, Drew, DeMar DeRozan, uh, James Harden, Drew, Drew Holiday. It's a really good draft class to be bad. I say that. The Portland Trailblazers is also bad. Of course, they have the rookie of the year, Victor Oladipo. They've also been in the lottery a bunch recently. They just haven't hit many of their picks. Hopefully, VO is that for them. And when it comes to the good teams... The Phoenix Suns are right up top, as they should be. 99 overall, Tracy McGrady. And uh, six-man uh, six man extravaganza. I don't know what to say. This man's a six-man. Uh, this was just the first year he's done that. He's been starting, if this is the first episode, he's been starting for the last couple seasons. Um, oh, maybe not so much. We should just change his position full-time to point guard. They got the captain, Kirk, starting for the playmaker, six assists per game. Dwayne Wade averaged eight. Start Dwayne Wade. I'm sure we're gonna make we're gonna make them do that for the playoffs. Uh, Cause why? What the heck? Spurs also really good. They had the MVP uh, LeBron James. They also got Mikael Bridges, Franz Wagner. This team is really solid up top, and then they just get worse and worse uh, on that bench. The Suns come into the playoffs in a 10 game win streak. By the way, I want people to recognize a 10 game win streak. That's always something I pay attention to. And I'm gonna do. I want to change the rotation. They're in a 10 game win streak. Things are working. If they go down in the series, I'll make it so that Dwayne Wade is a full-time starter. That's not happening today. They are on a 3-0 lead against the Clippers. And this is the first time we've seen the Clippers make the playoffs. This team has Jalen Suggs, and Jalen Suggs is their best player. And it looks like Suggs and them are going to prevent themselves from getting swept today. Shout out to him. I didn't know what to expect. Jalen Suggs, Brandon Ingram, young Brandon Ingram. This is your 3-B-I. So he's looking good at 21 years old. Uh, they got Kay Felder on the roster too, if you care. And then Greg Oden, who at this point is only 24. Uh, and he's, I don't know why all the centers in this game suck as far as efficiency goes. Okay, so we got a couple more 3-1 series across the league. So let's try to figure out uh, how this is going to go. This is the Lakers, who are down 3-1 to Luka and Kobe. Now the Lakers have been this pinnacle of success so far in this series. So if they end up losing in the first round, it's going to be... Kind of sad for their fan base, but they've won enough championships. You know what I'm saying? Is it close? The answer is absolutely. Four points. One point with a minute to go. A minute to go. We jump! I love jumping into a game and people are at the free throw line. 
because that gives me an opportunity to put the best players in. Drew Gooden, shout out to you. First year on the team, not too bad for Drew Gooden, but we're going to put in Marcus Pfizer, who is the better player at this point, has not missed a three-point shot in the playoffs, even though notoriously he's really bad. He's one for one. Okay, great. Three-point game in the favor of the Los Angeles Lakers. We got Luka. We got... Why is Kobe not on the court? Wait a minute. Is Kobe even active? He ain't. So why, why is he not on the... I don't understand this game. I, I, I did it. I swear I did it. Take out the one of the few 99 overall players in the entire association. Take him out of the game. Why don't we? When, when I'm back against the wall. We're, oh, no. The, you're winning this series. You have the opportunity to close this series out. You're going to take Kobe off the court with a minute to go. That's malpractice. Have I used that word enough today? Probably. Luca, lead to three. Ties the game. Ties the game. Now, Trey Young and, and um, uh, Jalen Green, who had a 60 point game this season. Oh, Luca with the clamps. They got to do what they got to do. They got to do what they got to do. Here's Joe Kim Noah with the screen. We are seeing him in the number two. The pass is this intercepted by, is that Keon Johnson? I think it is. Keon Johnson with the interception and brings the ball up the court. Screen comes from Eddie Curry. Never mind. Luca said, give me that ball. This is my time to shine. I'm being guarded by the guy in real life that I got traded for in the, the NBA draft. Here we go. Eddie Curry with the screen. Luca, same shot, different wing this time. No good. Trey Mann with the rebound, and he is pushing the pace. Will he slow it down? I hope so. Did you not like that, Trey? Good job. Find Jalen Green. Guarded by Corey Brewer, who is the defensive specialist they picked up this offseason. Trey Young with a long mid range jump shot. Very early 2000s of you, Trey Young. Good job. Good job. Nice way to be with the times. Even though I think this is the 2011 season, so it's not even that long ago. Wow, that means we only got a couple more episodes left. If this is the 2011 season, we're going into 2023. That's like six more episodes. That's kind of crazy. We're close to halfway through with this series. And maybe next year, when the new 2K come out, not next year, in the next month, we'll do a different version of this, but only time will tell. Kobe is back into the game. He gives it down to Luka, which is a good play because Trey Young is small. Turn around. Mitty is good. Out of the post. We got 18 seconds left in this fourth quarter. The Los Angeles Lakers have a chance to uh, extend the series. 3-1 series right now. This is a very crucial possession. I don't know if you want to go to OT with Luka. And Kobe being Bryant on the roster. I don't think you want to go against that team in overtime, but maybe I could be mistaken. Let's see exactly what happens with this Los Angeles Lakers team. It is weird to see Kobe um, going against the Lakers. That is something I got to get used to, but here we go. Trey Young has hit some very clutch shots in this series already. Here we go. They took Jalen Green off the court. Why? I don't know. He is one of the offensive powerhouses in this series so far. He's off the court. Trey Mann tries to come through. No good. Here's the Joe Kim Noah screen. Luka tries to fight over. Trey Young, leader! No good, and we're going to overtime, ladies and uh, gents. What a game. Now, we ain't going to watch that whole five-minute overtime. Y'all got me messed up, but if it is close again with a minute to go, best believe we'll jump back in. I still can't believe Giannis wasn't the first overall pick. That's just so insane to me. All right, here we go. Sim casting this OT time. It is still a two possess a one-possession game with a minute to go, so we jump back in. Uh, is people on the court that should be? I see Jalen Green. I see Kobe. I see Luke. I see Trey Young. As long as those four players on the court, I'm cool with everybody else. Those are the four, like, superstar, all-star caliber players. As long as they're on the court, we feel good. And there was a timeout for the Utah Jazz. Down by two with 50 seconds to go. Luka with the ball. Guarded by the smaller Trey Young. Downhill he goes. Stops for a midi. And it is green. Tie game. Trey Young with the ball. Uh, there's a... Oh, double team Trey Young. Gives it up to Joe Campbell, gives it right back. He takes the heavily contested, and it says open, but that was pretty well defended in my personal opinion. Uh, there's still a difference between shot clock and the game clock, so that's not the last opportunity the Lakers could potentially get. Eddie Curry over Joe Kim, no good, but he is fouled. Now, I don't know what his free throw was like, but this version of Eddie Curry is insane. He's been averaging 20 plus points per game over the last couple seasons. He is a 70-ish percent free throw shooter. Um, also, I didn't look to see how it was going. So here exactly the numbers. Luka and Cole both having a good game. Kobe only missed two shots so far. So, yeah, maybe feed Kobe just a little bit. I don't know. I'm not the coach. I ain't the coach. Here we go. First shot from Eddie Curry is up, and it is a green bean. So there is a timeout from the L.A. Lakers that I'm assuming is going to end up being used here right after the shot goes up, and it is good. Timeout Lakers. On cue. Here we go. Trey Young and company down by two. They don't score here. The game could potentially be over. 
So let's see exactly what they do. They do have Jalen Green on the court right now. There's the double. A slip from Drew Gooden. Not the YouTuber, but the NBA player. Big time dunk by Drew. And now, with 17 seconds to go, this is a banger. We could potentially see double OT. This is a first round matchup where the Lakers are trying to keep their season alive. You see the championship DNA in their, in their clothing. They're doing exactly what they need to keep the series alive. Eddie Curry with the ball. Kobe with the ball now, guarded by Jalen Green. He's going to take him to the post. Kobe trying to size him up five seconds ago, using the size that he has on Jalen Green. Turn around, shot. No good, and a double OT. The shot was in, and then it was out. We got a double OT game in the first round of the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Lock it in. Lock it in. Let's see what happens. Will it be close? The answer is no. Whoa, that just happened so fast. That just happened so fast. I missed my moment. Wait, Kobe had... Did Kobe have zero three-pointers before last? I don't know. I don't know. My apologies. That happened so fast. The season is over for the LA Lakers. Um, Where did they lose this game? Maybe on the rebounding? Maybe? I don't know. It was a good game nonetheless. We did get a double overtime game in the first round, and it was an elimination game for one of the teams. Nuggets going against the Spurs in a 3-1 series where the Spurs have the higher end right now. Of course, again, they have the MVP of the league. I don't think the Spurs have made a conference final so far. Don't look like it's happening right. Well, still a lot of time left, but uh, that, that game is not getting them to the next round. Clippers Suns is the next one. 3-1 series lead here as well. Again, like we mentioned, this team has Jalen Suggs. The Clippers have Wade. They have T-Mac. They have Kirk Heinrich. They have some other players that are really good. This is a blowout game for them to advance to the second round to see Kobe being Brian and company. This series has legendary potential. T-Mac, Dwayne Wade, Luka, and Kobe. Come on, man. That's a crazy series. Next, we got Kay Cunningham versus the, the Celtics. Kay needs help. And if they lose in this first round, I'm assuming that they're going to be buyers this offseason because... They, they desperately need somebody to go out there and help K because he is kind of a one-man show right now. And maybe you're seeing that one-man show right now because a minute to go. They're up by one with a minute to go. Let's see the, the box score. Um, oh, Kate's not having an amazing shoot tonight, but still the leading score here and everything. Um, just make sure that, yeah, we got to keep our point guard in the game there. All right, so the Hornets, I'm sorry, not the Hornets, the Bobcats um, could win this game and advance to the next round. So they're right around the corner. I did make the subs for each team. Ben Simmons with the step back out of the post. Mid-range jump shot. Dick Ben with a huge shot right there with a minute to go. Puts his team up by one point. Here is Mr. K Cunningham, one of the best players in the entire association. Trying to get downhill. He's going to use his size. He kicks it out to Ramirez. Ramirez for three. No good. Don't ask me about Ramirez. I have no idea what he's up to. What he's good at, what he's bad at. I know he ain't getting back on defense like he probably should. That is a quick four points for Ben Simmons. This version of Ben is insane. There's no question marks about who he is or what he can and can't do. And a steal! Robert Williams picks the pocket of K. Cunningham. A basket right here could end the game. Wow. Now it is just five points, but that was a huge swing. The turnover goes a long way. And if they don't call timeout right here, we might sim cast the rest. They don't call time. Okay, so they don't call time out. Here we go. Can they score right here to keep the uh, the the streak alive? A double comes to Cade. He gives up the pearl to Ramirez for three again. Yeah, why are we giving Ramirez? I understand why the other team is giving Ramirez those shots. That's that's probably all she wrote for this game. Specifically, we will see a game seven. Ramirez, let's see what you're good at. Let's see what you're bad at. You are a career 20 24% free uh, three point shooter. He's actually a rook. Um, he has hit a few. But the two biggest shots of the game being in his hands, probably not what you want. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so there it is. Our, that's our first game seven, potentially. Next, we have in this series, uh, this is Kemba Walker, Jalen Brown, RJ, Mobamba versus Steve Nash. Yeah, both of these teams were buyers. And former teammates, RJ and Steve Nash, are going to see each other in the first round. One of these teams is going to be disappointed that they bought at the deadline and it didn't equate to an NBA second round appearance or whatever. Somebody's about to be real disappointed. And who will it be? The answer is, uh, actually, I don't know yet. It is close. Maybe not as close as we want it to be. Five-point game, tie game with three seconds to go. I don't know who got the ball. I'm jumping. 
Because a lot can happen in three seconds. A lot can happen. Can we just see a walk-off game winner and that just be the end? That's the only vision we have in this series is a walk-off game winner. Here are the Orlando Magic the ball. Are they going to inbound it? Mike Miller gives it up to Wendell Carter. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it out. What, what material lasts here? Oh, yeah. Damian Lillard's on this thing. I forgot about that. He's coming off the bench because they have guards. What material lasts here? Maybe nothing. But I don't know what coach is drawing up. So you got this guy. I can't even tell who this is coming off the screen. But he flares way too hard instead of like, there's a lot of open space here. But you took way too long to get there. So now Wendell Carter's like, oh, I got to bail us out. And he dribbled away from the rim and took a ridiculous shot. So we get an overtime. We get an overtime. Okay. They're probably going to have to make a decision about Kimba versus Dame and do it relatively soon. So either Kimba or Dame could be a big time trade piece and a huge trade for like a superstar because both of them project to be all-stars and potential all-NBA players. And you obviously don't need both because they're two point guards and they can't really play together because like full time because they're smaller. But yeah, uh, so a, a lot can be done for this team. The Miami Heat could have a nice future if they just use their pieces the right way. Right now, are they both playing? No. Yeah. So Dame is just sitting on the bench in overtime right now. Evan Mobley with the ball with a minute to go. Zaire Williams guarding him. 4-5 pick and roll. Evan Mobley kind of has his role on this team where he can do this type of stuff. Who are they missing? Who are who are they missing on their team? Oh, never mind. Marcus Banks is really good today. So, yeah, keep him on the court. I was going to say sub him out for somebody else. But if he's your leading scorer, keep him in the game. Turnover from Evan Mobley. Trying to do a little bit too much. Here's Jalen Brown. The ball was in his left hand periodically. Mo Bamba for three, no good. Lil' old Kimba Walker with the board. Now he should have dribbled it out and kicked it out. That's Evan Mobley. <laughs> he should have dribbled it out and kicked it out or something, but he didn't. Mobley gives it up to Wendell Carter. I, do they only pass to each other? Out of bounds. Do they only pass to each other? What are they doing? You have Steve Nash. Let Steve Nash orchestrate the O, please. But trying to get to the basket. Gives up to Mo Bamba, who goes right over the top of Wendell Carter Jr. He's a little bit smaller there, and that is a two-point lead for the Miami Heat. This Florida Classic is looking good. Orlando trying to close it out. The Miami Heat said, no, not so not so soon for us, buddy. Evan Mobley is the full-time point power forward. I kind of like that, I guess. It just kind of diminishes what Steve Nash brings to the table. But, I mean, it's, it's fine, I guess. Here's Mike Miller. Mike Miller, what are you going to do? He gets to the rim. RJ with great defense, 100% smother for RJ. And that might be the game, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sitting here watching free throws. So that might be the game. Let's see. So I get another, another game seven coming up. Zaire Williams with a huge game. Five made three-pointers for the young Zaire. Oh, he's not young. I'm sorry. He's seven years into his career. For Zaire Williams, that's huge. The Warriors versus Timberwolves. Uh, the Warriors, of course, bought Shea Gears Alexander at the deadline. And Shea and Kawhi together is kind of crazy. But even with that said, they're down two, three in this series. Can they force a game seven against the Minnesota Timberwolves? The team I wanted to trade Shaq to. They might be able to get it done without Shaq. Only time will tell. We get a not-so-close game in a Game 7 forced by Kawhi, TJ Ford, and Shea. Shea with 15 assists. All right, Shea, I see you. And here's another um, potential. Oh, wait, Wizards. Wizards, Knicks are next. The Knicks are the next team that might have to blow it up after the Pacers. The Pacers didn't make the playoffs at all. It's wraps. This, the Pacers are selling right now. The Pacers are selling this offseason. They're, they're, or reformulated, retooling or something because they didn't make the playoffs at all. It's crazy. The Knicks are another one of those teams have been together with Davion Mitchell, with Allen Iverson. Uh, and, and, well, they're old now. AI was a 90 overall two seasons ago. He's down to an 84. So if they can't make it out of first round, that's another team that might be trying to shake some things up because it hasn't really got or uh, ended up being the way they wanted to. Uh, and the Wizards, again, have been a staple of uh, success so far in this series. And they might be doing it again, making it to the second round at least. And that is the case. It is probably time that you part ways with Allen Iverson or Kmart. Maybe both. Uh, okay, I, guess, I guess we'll see. The Bulls-Raptors series is going on. Anthony Davis, the Murrays, because DeJounte's on the bench right now. Anthony Davis, the Murrays, and Giannis. That team projects to be ridiculous. Ridiculous. Can they make some noise early on by being one of the few seeds or eight seeds to be the one seed and don't look like it? The one seed that Chicago Bulls are going to advance to the second round. But that team's future is crazy because AD is only 21. Uh, Jamal Murray is only 22. Val is only 22. This team has crazy potential. Giannis, if he turns to the player that we know he can be. Oh, the 
this thing gonna be kind of crazy. And they're gonna be kind of expensive eventually too. Don't forget that. All right, so here's the Nuggets versus the Spurs. I can't believe we're still in the first round, but we've had a lot of good games. We're jumping in here a minute to go, two point game. Um, the Denver Nuggets are trying to prevent themselves from being eliminated. Uh, Jay Sean Tate bounced the ball. Who is that? Uh, Michael Red is in the game. Chris Dunn. Uh, is that Ennis Cantor? I think that Ennis Cantor on the court. There oh, is a turnover. Butler with the steal. That this a possession right here for James could close the series. He passes it out. What? Butler with a long two? No, he passed to Pavlovich. Pavlovich for three. No good. Man, the Denver Nuggets just lucked out, man, because that turnover was ridiculous. Here it is. Gilbert Arenas with the ball being guarded by point guard LeBron James. Point guard Braun just he he engulfs anybody he's defending because he's so much bigger than them. And yeah, that's a tough shot from Gil, but high off the glass. We have a tie game, y'all. Gil has said he does not want to go home. He's got 32 and 9 right now. Uh, on the other side, MVP LeBron James has almost a triple double with one board. He'll be right there. And he has opportunity to close this series with this next possession. But will he be able to? Mikel Bridges gets the inbound. He's been guarded by Lonnie Walker, the fourth, I think that is. Uh, yes, that is. So let's see what he does. Is LeBron not going to get a touch at all? Is the Mikel Bridges show? Oh, he gives it down to LeBron five seconds ago. LeBron with a small defender. A double team comes. Brian has to get it up. He gets it up. And he misses it. It was considered open. He just ain't got the clutch gene, I guess. And now we're going to another overtime in this first round. The 2011 NBA playoffs so far have been electric. We have game seven after game seven, overtime after overtime, and we are just talking about the first round, which makes me scared that the rest of the playoffs is not going to be nearly as good. But, hey, I can only spectate right now. I can only hope that things get better. And, yeah, the Spurs going to OT and drop 22 points. They said, forget all of that. We're not going to another game. They dropped 22 points to eliminate the Denver Nuggets. Just like that, the Nuggets are done. We have uh, three game sevens that we got to account for. I... All right. Uh, this wasn't close, so I don't feel too bad about missing this one. This one, please don't be close either. It wasn't close. Okay, so we missed two game sevens because I hit the wrong button. Either way, we got one more to care about before we get to the second round. Again, it's just Shea and Kawhi versus Bagley and company. Um, Bagley is a leader of a team. Shout out to Marvin Bagley. This different universe is kind of crazy. And the, the Warriors get out to an early lead, but there are the Timberwolves fighting back. But the Warriors look like they're advancing. And yeah, the lower seed advances in this case. Bagley tried to do his part, but he didn't really get the help of the others. And Kawhi Leonard was a block and, and a two assists and a rebound away from a 5x5 five five playoff performer. The Celtics get eliminated in a series that had zero close games. As you can see right here, 27 point lost to get swept by the Washington Wizards. So that just happened. The Bulls are down 3-1 to Evan Mobley and company. The Steve Nash acquisition is looking pretty good. One game away from being in the conference finals, but the way that first quarter started, I don't know if it's happening for this game. No way. The Spurs versus the Warriors in a game five. Oh, I'm sorry, game six right here. Uh, somebody could potentially put it all away. And it will be not close enough for us to jump. Yes, it will. Three-point game, two minutes to go. I love when we have game after game to jump into. If you're wondering who's up in the series, I'm also wondering that question. So let me double check. The Warriors are up 3-2 right now. The Warriors are the ones up 3-2. Okay, Warriors. They Again, they also bought at the deadline. And so far, it's working out pretty good. I didn't even realize they had Pascal Siakam on the team. Uh, he don't get a ton of minutes, even though he probably should. Okay, uh, that's something. But they also have Pascal Siakam on the roster, so it's a nice and young team uh, now that Shea's there. Shea's a little bit older than the rest of the group, but, you know, it still works. Why do they have all of the, the good players uh, on the bench? This is what I don't understand. Your season is on the line. You lose this game. The season is over. Coach like, yeah, we we going to get some rest to Mikel Bridges with a minute to go and the two minutes to go in the game. You don't get your butt on that court and go play some ball. You do got Braun on the, on the court, though. Um, so that's going to help, I guess. Here's Butler giving it down to Braun, being guarded by Shea. He dribbles once, and there's the double team from Kawhi. Mikel is not open, but he has to make something shake. A screen on uh, said Jared Dudley. Yes, it is. A screen on Jared Dudley and a nice floater by Mikel. Five-point game. Win this one, force a game seven, and potentially def uh, prevent this young Warriors team from making a conference finals run. And also, their coach just told 
Pascal, go sit down. I told him to come back in. They coach said no. Kawhi Leonard with the mid-range jump shot puts it back to a one-possession game. Braun with an ISO trying to get to the basket. He stops, and he gives it up to McHale. and say, McHale, save me. But he's been guarded by is that Kawhi Leonard. I mean, not a lot you can do around Kawhi. Jared Butler for three. The double team comes for Braun. He kicks it out to Butler, and Butler hits a crucial three with a minute and a half to go. If the Warriors do not score right here, I... I'm going to say that's probably wraps in the game. Seven's on the way. Kawhi with the leaning three. No good. Brian with the rebound. I think that's my cue. And I would be correct. The Spurs live to see a game seven behind LeBron, Franz, Butler, who took more shots than anybody on the court, but he hit the big one, and Mikael Bridges. The Suns are up 3-2 on the Jazz. Again, I think this series has potential to be great. And it, I guess it has been so far, but this is the one that could... Close it out for the Phoenix Suns potentially or get Luka and Kobe into their first conference finals together. It does not look like that is the case. They will go another season of a second round elimination. And Dwayne Wade was am amazing. And Stromal Swift was also pretty good. And they get to the conference finals. The Bulls, again, are down 3-2 to this Orlando Magic team. Could they force a game seven after being down 3-1? The Orlando Magic is trying to prevent that. But the way the Bulls play, I don't think that's happening. We're going to get a game seven, two game sevens in the second round. What a playoff so far. I don't know if this is going to be another year that lives up to this. So I hope y'all are basking in all the funness that is happening across the association. This is LeBron versus Kawhi. And it looks as though LeBron and company will advance to the conference finals. Franz Wagner was near perfect from the field. He was near perfect. And on the other side of things... Um, Shea with a double-double, of course, but not enough shot attempts, if you ask me. And TJ Ford took too many threes and missed a lot of them. So, uh, that very young team, the fact that they even got to a Game 7 against the MVP of the league is pretty impressive. I'm sure they'll be back there in a year. Maybe, maybe I was going to say two years, maybe one year. We'll see. The Bulls were down 3-1 in this series. It is close as of right now. Six minutes to go. It is a comeback for the Chicago Bulls. They put up 150 points in a game seven behind the Kevin having a great game. KG struggled and still they put up 150 points. Oh, Evan Mobley just shot 31 free throws. I have to Google most, most free throws. Shaq shot 39 free throws in a playoff game once upon a time, NBA Finals game, but that was like hack a Shaq. 31 is the fourth highest behind Bob Cousy, DeAndre Jordan, and Shaq. They were not hacking that man because he's a great free throw shooter. Wait, what, what, what does this look like? It's a marker. Uh, you can't tell. It's a marker. Sorry. Oh, it's Shaq. This was not hitting this many free throws. Evan Mobley. Somebody screenshot this because this is crazy. A 50 piece in a game seven in a loss, unfortunately. It boils down to the top two teams in the regular season in each conference. So we did all of that just to see the best two teams make it. I want to remind people it is about the journey, not necessarily the destination. 3-1 series lead for the Chicago Bulls on the Washington Wizards. These are two teams that have definitely seen each other in the conference finals before. And it looks like the Chicago Bulls are going to walk out of here with a win. Yes, they will. And they are back in the NBA Finals behind Colin Sexton and Kevin Durant. And the Spurs are up 3-1-2. The Suns, the Suns, the almighty Suns look like they might be going down. But again, the Bulls were down 3-1 last series, and they ended up winning the series. So here's a game. They stay alive. Yep, keep fighting. And you know what? I did say that if things go bad, we throw Dwayne Wade back in their starting lineup for them so they can have their best unit out at most times. So whew, that, that minor adjustment might save them from being eliminated in uh, this series. Another huge game for them. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, y'all. We, we can have another big old comeback, a 3-3 series right now. Game 7 is underway. We are in Phoenix versus the Spurs. Can the Suns pull off the near impossible? The answer is maybe. Is it close? It is. One point game. Ooh, winner of this game goes to the NBA Finals. Remind you, the winner of this game goes to the NBA Finals. Captain Kerr gets a lane to the basket. He got scared of Braun, but made the beautiful play of kicking it to T-Mac, and T-Mac misses the wide open three. He gonna want that one back for sure. Pavlovich with the ball being guarded by Stromal Swift, and he gives it up to Butler, who gives it back to Pavlovich, who gives it down to Braun on the block. Braun has been doing this pretty heavily in the games we've watched, trying to bully his opponents. T-Mac ain't no, no bum, though. He's not 
He's not no bum. I don't know what you was thinking, bro. I don't know what you was thinking. But it wasn't a smart thought. Whatever it was, <laughs> it wasn't a smart thought. And they turned the ball over. And now the captain is in the game. I told them to put Dwayne Wade in and they refused to listen. I just That's like one thing that bothers the heck out of me about this game. Please just allow me to have this universe be the way I need it to be. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they called timeout. Great. Okay, so that wasn't that wasn't actually me. That was that was them. Oh, was it me? I don't know. Oh my God, Dwayne Wade is in the basketball game. You love to see it, ladies and gentlemen. I do see Stephen Adams also plays for the Suns. He's sitting over there on the bench. So shout out to Stephen Adams. Here's a screen. Dwayne Wade trying to get around that corner, guarded by LeBron James, goes right over him, and it is a basket three-point game in the favor of the Suns. He's shooting 39% from the field today. It don't matter. He hit the big shot. All right, Bron. See what you got. Let's see what you got, Mr. MVP man. Down by three. Winner go home scenario for y'all. Y'all been pretty good coming back. LeBron with the midi. That's pretty easy. That's as easy as it gets. Only one timeout both ways. So they got to use it the right way. So that we're going to see it held to like the last couple possessions, I would assume. Here is Dwayne Wade with the ball. He gives it up to Jonathan Kaminga. Kaminga for three. Bottoms. Two possession game. Ten Fourth quarter points from Jonathan Kaminga in a game seven. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Pavlovich gives it up to LeBron in the post, who gives it up to Franz. Franz wide, and he also hits a big time three to put it right back down to one point. Those doubles get thrown at LeBron, and they're acting as if he is not one of the best playmakers in the history of ball. He is able to make the right play at most times. I'm realizing that Mikel Bridges is not in the game. Instead, they're closing out with Pavlovich, but what a good defensive stop from him. He gives it up to Braun. Braun stepping back. Oh, he hit it. LeBron takes the lead. Pavlovich just had a great defensive possession and a great pass that led to a LeBron James shot. Oh, my God. He just got caught fumbling. He got caught stumbling and fumbling. Oh, my God. This is why you probably want Mikel Bridges in the game. This don't happen to Mikel very often. Where's that man? And the wise words of one of the OGs, give that man a map. Where are you going? And just like that, it's back to a two-point game. This game has everything. Three-point shots, steals, uh, potential game winners on the way. Here we go. Braun is intercepted. Miles Bridges dives on the floor to save the ball. That is one of the most crucial turnovers that could happen. And it came from the league MVP. And a lob to Miles Bridges. Why would you think that that was the right idea given the circumstances? I don't know. But it happened. And here we are 30 seconds away from potentially crowning somebody uh, the winner of the game in the series. Braun, another shot where he's leaning away from the rim but going towards the rim. One shot clock left. Tie game. Who does the shot go to? Is it is it T-Mac? Is it Dwayne? They do bring in Mikhail for the defenses, so that's a good sign from coach. Who will it be? As of right now, it's in the hands of Tracy McGrady. Six seconds ago, he finally saw him make his move. I think it's his shot to miss. It's his shot to make. He gives up to Miles Bridges. He's open. Miles Bridges sends the Spurs home. Oh, my God. Wow. T-Mac with the mental capacity. To understand that the shot don't have to be you. And we get the game winner in the conference finals. And we see. Wow, the Suns are going back to the finals, y'all. They're going back to the finals. Miles Bridges got the crucial steal down the stretch and hit the biggest three in franchise history. I'm saying it. Is that hyperbole? Maybe. The NBA Finals are the Phoenix Suns versus the Chicago Bulls. If you are enjoying the video and you're watching still, leave it a like, man. This is very critical part of the season. NBA Finals game one is won by the San Antonio Spurs behind a 30 and 15 game from Dwayne Wade. Game two was also won by the Suns. Game three also won by the Suns. And is this a sweep? It absolutely is. The Suns go out there and win themselves and NBA Finals. And that is their second in the row. They swept last year's Finals appearance, and they swept this year as well. I mean, there hasn't been a ton of parity in this league. Oh, I guess that's not true. We've had five champions in nine years. That's, I think that's fine. And just like that, the season is wrapped, man. That was a very fun season. And Steve Nash is, is calling it quits. 
Steve Nash calling the quits. And in this series, we don't force anybody to stay longer than what they want to do. So shout out to Steve Nash for his time in this series. Unfortunately, we haven't, we didn't get, get to see a lot of them because the Milwaukee Bucks were never really good enough. Um, even though they bought him, uh, traded for him a couple of years before he got there, they just never were good enough. And he decided to call it a career. And I, res I respect that. Will he get... Um, oh, he's not a Hall of Famer in this universe. Steve Nash never won two MVPs. He never made an NBA Finals or Conference Finals for that matter. And because of that, he doesn't make the Hall. It's kind of crazy where we live in. So this is the Steph Curry, Drew Holiday, James Harden year. The Grizzlies have the highest odds and they keep that pick. The Bucks. You see that Bucks fans? You had the fourth highest odds. You jumped all the way up to two. Okay. The Hornets. What number of odds did you have? The Hornets had the third odds, so they stay at three. And then the Trailblazers have the fourth odds. The Grizzlies also have the 14th overall pick. And then the Bucks have 19 and 24. Um, so that's that's that. Now we could potentially see some teams making some, some big-time adjustments. Like I said, I do want to try to get... Uh, I do want to try to figure out what to do with the Pacers. We'll do that at or after the NBA draft. Um, I do want to double check to see if there's any can, like good teams that found their way into the lottery that their pick could be valuable enough to be the determining factor in a big time trade. Nope. So we just go to the draft. Let's see how this goes. First overall pick of the 2011 NBA draft is Blake Griffin. He does still end up being really, really, really good. 80 overall player coming into it. He will be going down to Memphis. Second overall pick is James Harden to the Bucks. So Bucks fans, you lost Shea, you lost RJ and Steve Nash, but you gained James Harden, which is pretty, pretty good. I think that's a pretty good uh, change, you know. Next pick is Tariq Evans. He's going to New Orleans, I guess. Fourth or fifth overall pick is Jeff Teague. Then we get Gerald Henderson. Then we get Dante Cunningham. And then we get Jordan Hill. And then we get... St oh, my God. Bro, bro. The Atlanta Hawks have everything. They have Al Horford at 26. They have uh, Jimmy Butler at 25. They have Draymond Green at 24. I don't even know if Draymond played this year. He may have played one game. Is that one game? He played one game this season. And now they have Steph Curry to add to that. This team should be buying. This team should be buying. You know? You, you have to buy. You have to be buyers at this point. Uh, Jimmy's about to hit 90 overall next season. And you got Steph Curry to add to that. Yeah, that team's about to be nasty. Ty Lawson goes next. Ricky Rubio's next. DeMar DeRozan goes to the 76ers to team up with Kyrie Irving. And I think Ray Allen is on that team. Brandon Jennings. Drew Holiday goes to OKC. And the end is Dante Dixon. Uh, that is the end of the lottery. Anybody outside of the lottery like, man, uh, Marcus Thornton. Tyler Hansbro, the shooting the beat. Uh, we got people like Danny Green. You know, players that had long NBA careers, but nobody that, like, jumps off the page. Patrick Beverly's in the second round, so on and so forth. Wow. Finding Steph Curry that late in the draft, history repeats itself, man. History repeats itself. So, free agency should be interesting. A lot of restricted guys. Kyrie Irving being the number one dude there. He's going to resign. Kawhi Leonard is going to resign. Uh, Clay Thompson. The Bulls offered something they could match, but man, the Orlando Magic said, hey, we want it. This is the only thing we could think of doing. Um, it, it's not beautiful, man. Dirt's $20 million is almost impossible to get somebody to match it. They were trading them to the Pacers. We said the Pacers wanted to shake some things up. They did. Um, and now the Pacers have the greatest front court in the league. Now the rest of the roster is it's early in free agency. The rest of the roster still needs to be put together. But that's like the best that we could potentially do. That's a team that needed to shake up. Um, J.C. Richardson could probably get third throw to a third team because they don't necessarily need him there either. One lottery protected pick from the Bobcats alongside Larry Hughes. Um, actually, you could take a shim to beat too because you need some young player, I guess. And now um, K. Cunningham can move over to a full-time point guard and he's got somebody on the team that can play with him. Or he can stay shooting guard, and we can have uh, Jr. go to small forward, and the, the other Jr. can play point guard full time. They still got a full roster to mess around with. There are some contracts in the league that at this point are kind of untradeable, bro. Like Jermaine O'Neal has been on the block for three years now. We have not found someone that's 
that could take $15 million for his production. The Lakers picked up Rashad Lewis on a three years, $31 million deal. He has been the best journeyman in the NBA, bro. He's, he's, he's back. He's back. If you don't remember, he won a championship with them a few years ago, went to Atlanta and was okay. He was actually better than okay if you look at the shooting splits. And now he's back to LA and said, hey, I'm home. Jimmy Butler signs an extension. Stephon Marbury is the Steve Nash replacement with Steve Nash retiring. That's That makes a lot of sense to me. But for the most part, there aren't a lot of um, big moves in free agency, like needle moving moves, which is fine. Player progression is up next. And ooh, Allen Iverson is just $21 million for 81 overall. It's gonna be hard to see him coming back to this team next season. Uh, but that's just the, the way it goes. T-Mac and KG are both regressing. Top of the league is still Kobe, Duncan, and K Cunningham. Um, who else is like jumping into that? Ben Simmons is now 90 overall club. Anthony Davis is very close to 90 overall. I think that that Raptors team has a chance to make big noise. Big noise. I'm going to make it so that DeJounte Murray is a shooting guard. So now they can run a really nice lineup. Giannis jumps up three going into a sophomore season. That team has good potential, man, for real. Uh, so we did the deadline. We made a few trades. My mic wasn't on. So, so uh, Amari Stoudemire got traded. Some other people, we'll talk about that in a second. LeBron James was another MVP. Steph Curry does end up winning Rookie of the Year. Yeah, the Atlanta Hawks are just destined to be great in three, let's say three seasons. Uh, Dwayne Wade went six man of the year. Even though I did make him a point guard technically, they still decided to come off the bench. I, that's their decision. They won two championships doing that, so I can't be mad at them. A new defensive player of the year because Tim Dunk is now playing with Dirk, and maybe Dirk took something away. Evan Mobley is there. Atoria Prince wins most improved player, and then Mason Yee wins coach of the year. Christopher Wade is that, and all NBA teams are here. Carmelo still made all their first team, even though the Knicks suck. They also sold the deadline. They sold Davion Mitchell, and they sold Tyson Chandler. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, second team is here. Third team is here. Defensive teams. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Uh, so... The 76ers were buyers um, at the deadline, and they ended up acquiring Tyson Chandler. So they have Chris Bosh, Kyrie Irvin, Tyson Chandler. They also got, like, DeMontis Sabonis. Uh, they got a young DeMar, rookie DeMar DeRozan and Harrison Barnes in year number three. So they got a nice young team, and, you know, Tyson being 29 makes him the oldest player in the rotation. Uh, I'm sorry, no, because he does in the rotation. He's one of the older guys on the team, but he's not too far away from being still really, really good. Thunder were selling. Um, and they sold. They got old Sharif Abdul Rahim back in exchange for Mari Stoudemire. They also threw some draft capital, so it's not just Amari for him one for one. But Mari Stoudemire is now a Clipper, and they, <laughs> bro, they were the five seed when we traded him away. They missed the playoffs entirely. How was that possible? Oh, maybe they weren't the five seed, but they were in the playoff hunt for sure. But this explains a bit of it. A lot of L's. This is around the deadline. A lot of L's right here. Well, they missed the playoffs. The best team was the Suns. The Spurs were second. The Jazz were third. All within one game of each other. So we might be seeing another legendary playoffs here in the association. Out East, the Bulls and the Bobcats. The Jason Richardson acquisition. It's funny to see him actually with the Bobcats. He averages 23, which is the most he's averaged in the last couple seasons. Of course, he's a proven playoff player in this universe. And Kay Cunningham is also a, pr a proven playoff player. So uh, they have, this team is not very good, but their top end talent is that J.R. Bremer has been a, a phenomenal for them. Undrafted player that they picked up in the expansion draft. He's a, He's been really good. Worst teams, the Bucks are still really bad, um, but that's okay. Shaq signed back. What are you going to do about it? James Harden is here. He averaged 19 on some good stuff. And then out west, the Trailblazers were um, the worst team, which makes sense. All right, let's get to some playoff plays, baby. We got two sweeps in the first round. The Utah Jazz eliminate the Golden State Warriors in four. I mean, the, this I thought this was going to be a good matchup. And game four was good, but for the most part, it wasn't. Uh, the whole series wasn't. And if it's a 3-0 series lead, I typically don't want to jump in for one game because we kind of assume that the team that's up 3-0 is going to win. Same thing on the other side. The 76ers did end up buying this deadline, but still wasn't good enough to get past the Charlotte Bobcats. Um, and that makes sense because the Bobcats, again, are pretty solid. We do have a 3-0 series lead over here. We got a couple 3-1s. Um, I just realized that this 3-0 is in the favor of the underdog. Whoa. Um... Uh, former two-time NBA champion Suns are down three. They were just down 3-0, but down 3-1 now. 
And we got a couple more three ones across the association, so I'm going to get to a, a few of them. This Raptors team, we talked about how good they were going to be in the future. Both of the Murrays are starting. Giannis is up to an 81. AD is a 90 overall club. And they're going against Tim Duncan and Dirk in the first round. They're up 3-1 on those dudes. Could we see them advance and potentially end it all for the Pacers? Because if they lose this, they might end up selling completely and, and kind of try to get some better assets. Uh, the Pacers stay alive. Tony Parker is 29. He's, he's going to have a ton of value. Dirk is still really good. Tim Duncan is 36. He's still really good. But if, yeah, if the core is not working, even if you did just buy a couple a year ago, you got to be able to, to bite the bullet and say, hey, let's just sail. Let's just sail. Uh, the Wizards ended up winning this game, and they eliminate the Boston Celtics. They were up 3-1, and they close it out. The Washington Wizards advance again. This team continues to, to advance to at least the second round. The team is a perennial second round team. The Bulls are getting blown out to start this game, and they're not coming back from that. And the one seed does drop. The Bulls get eliminated in the first round. Mo Bamba with a 20 rebound game. They're gonna have to sell Damian Lillard, bro. They're gonna have to sell him. There's no way that you have him coming off the bench now. He is only an 83 at 24. Uh, Kemba's a 90, so you're not selling Kemba just because in real life, Damian Lillard is better, but like, you have to do it, I think. Because being the eighth seed, it's not good enough. And there's a world where you can accelerate the timeline by acquiring Dirk, Tim Duncan. You know, with with Lillard being the, the big piece in that, I think they'd be interested. Lakers-Timberwolves first round matchup. The Timberwolves have this lead right now. And it is close, but how close is it? Lakers force game seven. Lakers force game seven. So we have two game sevens. We got this game right here. But you know what? I should go to this game seven. This first round is not living up to last year's first round. The Toronto Raptors advance um, in a game seven where they dominate it. And yeah, next video, we're probably making some adjustments to the Pacers. They thought that they could kind of close their, their eyes and, and get a feel for what success was by trading for Dirk. It didn't happen that way. Unfortunately, yeah, so unfortunately things ain't going the way I wanted to. Because it's not, so this game wasn't even close. So I'm not tripping about this too much. But it's not showcasing like, oh, if you simulate this game, if you simulate this game, then you're going to miss out on these games. I absolutely hit the wrong button. So if you know, you know. It's just a little bit rough. This game right here is going down to the wire. Two minutes left. Tie game. Let's get into it, baby. I don't know why the Spurs always find themselves in games super close down the stretch. I, I, yeah, I just don't. I don't know. Ooh, Gilbert Arenas is injured right now. We don't see a ton of injuries uh, anymore. So the fact that he's hurt right now does suck for the team. Uh, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And one of the things they got to do is who is playing four for them? Okay. That's who they're, that's who they're running that for, Jerry Wallace. Two minutes to go in this game. Let's see what happens. A steal from No Chill Gil Arenas. All right, that's huge. Two minutes to go. Trying to get downhill. A lot of bodies in white jerseys. Out to Ayo Desumu for three. No good. Rebound. And Nick Collison, who gives it up to Butler, who finds his way in every single one of these close games because I don't know. I told them to put Franz Wagner in the game. As you can see, Franz Wagner still on the bench. So coach is saying, hey, we ride him with whoever. Freedom with the rebound. Gives it up to Chris Dunn. Nobody has scored just yet since we jumped in. Here's Gil going against LeBron. We've seen these two match up in the playoffs, I think, two years in a row at this point. Gill trying to get downhill. He passed it up to Freedom, who's got inside position. No good. He gives it up to Arenas. Long two. Missed. And this is ugly basketball. But basketball is still basketball. And that's the sport that we love the most. That's the sport we love the most. LeBron, spin move. Kicks it out. Butler for three. This time, no good. He did hit a huge three last year. This year, not that case. It's still a minute to go. Gill trying to get downhill. He passed it up to Freedom. And Freedom with the dunk. And we do see a timeout by the Spurs. They put Mason in the game instead of Franz Wagner. Who is Mason? I don't really know. LeBron ties the game up with a minute ago. He made that look extremely easy um, because they didn't take Chris Dunn off the court. I can only do so much, y'all. I can only do so much. And I did my substitutions. And is that Gilbert Arenas is on the bench. Yep. And uh, yeah, so it is what it is. Freedom with the basket. That's huge. That's huge, y'all. Freedom with the basket. Two-point game. Less than a minute to go. What will happen? LBJ trying to get downhill on Chris Dunn. He takes the long mid-range jump shot, and he is money. 
They need to stop. He's got 20. Gil has 24, but Gil's probably done playing, I guess. Lonnie Walker with the ball. Lonnie Walker the fourth. Respect the fourth. A steal. They've been trying to force feed, and it's all game since we've been here. That time it is intercepted. And what will Mikael do? He gives and gives. He's going to give it up to Braun. Braun's using his size. Shot over Chris Dunn. No good. Five seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Will they be able to score right here and close out the Spurs? Long three. Chris Dunn. Whoa. I tried to get them to take Chris Dunn out the game. He has three made threes, and that is a huge shot with 18 seconds to go. Once upon a time, Chris Dunn was one of my favorite players in the league. When the Bulls were tanking and he was one of the starters, I used to love Chris Dunn, wishing him the best. He had a huge shot right there. LeBron with the ball, guarded by him. Are they going to relinquish some of his time, or are they going to go early? Down by three. It looked like they're going early. LeBron draws the foul and one. A free throw ties it up. Chris Dunn, give it, did he take it the way with the foul on Braun? Let's not act like Braun is a 99% free throw shooter. He hits it green. Timeout, 12 seconds to go. Here we go. Uh, Gilbert Arenas is still on the bench, but hey, if Chris Dunn is, is this nice, then I guess it makes sense, right? He turns it over. No timeouts to go. Thaddeus Young, downhill. He passes it up to Mason. Who the heck is Mason? Who the heck is Mason? And why is he Roger Mason? Why is Roger Mason? Oh man, Roger Mason pretty good. Pretty good three-point shooter. Shooter. All right. I mean, there are a lot of ways this could have gone with the amount of time when you got the steal. Um the amount of time left on the clock. How, can I see that? I can't really see it. It's enough time to find LeBron James. This is the moment you should have just give it to LeBron right here. This is a bucket. LeBron's just going to run down court. That's the bucket. Instead, you rely on Roger Mason who misses, and now we're going to an overtime in a win-or-go-home scenario. Will it stay close? We've seen the Spurs go into an overtime and dominate. This looks like another another time they did that. Man, they are just overtime demons. Don't ask them to do nothing when you watch it. But as soon as overtime hit, them boys just play differently. And, yeah, they advanced to the second round. And now the Suns were down 3-0 in this series. They have climbed their way back to force a game seven. They are at home. And, and, they're going to get eliminated. Both of the one seeds drop in the first round. Q Rich, huge game. Scotty Barnes, a player that we haven't talked about much in the series because they haven't made a lot of noise as a team. He's been consistently one of the better players in the league. He finally makes it to the second round. And he's going against the Lakers. And the La it's not like the Lakers are this powerhouse. They could make a conference finals appearance. It's a 3-0 series lead over here, by the way. Uh, the 3-0 series lead. Again, 3-0, I'm not simcasting because I kind of have an idea how it's going to go. But boy, this super young team. Who is Nance? Ryan Nance. Backup center with a 13 rebound game. Six of them offensive. They just made a crazy push. Man, I love that for them. Man. I love that they there. And now we get a game five here between the Wizards and the Miami Heat. Look like it's going to end in the Washington Wizards dominating the Miami Heat. And the Miami Heat being eliminated in just five. We got a 3-4 matchup on that side of the bracket for the conference finals. Kobe and Luka versus uh, LeBron and Franz Wagner, we'll say. Will it be close enough for us to jump into to see LeBron versus Kobe? The answer is absolutely. A minute to go, baby. A minute to go. One point game. I forget who has the lead. Uh, I guess I could check that in a second. Oh. Three straight wins from the Jazz after losing the first two. And they are one game away from making it to the conference finals. There we go. One game away. And they're down by one with a minute to go. Uh, Kobe is in the court. LeBron is not. Just Jared Butler just finds his way on the court every game we watch of them. It's been heavy spurs in this series. And I can't help it if they always end up in a win or go home game that goes to overtime and stuff. But LeBron not being in is crazy. There's Butler with a stop, though, and a board. A stop and a board for Butler right there. So shout out to him. Here we go. A Thaddeus Young with the ball. He's slicing. He's dicing. He's left it. Left it. He's right it. Without LeBron in the game, creating shots is a little bit tough, huh? It's a little bit tough. So, yeah. Uh, good, good luck. They still got the one-point lead. I love this Jazz court, by the way. It's beautiful. We give it up to Luka, who takes the midi. No good. We want to see Kobe touch the ball. And there is a foul, fifth foul on Keon Johnson. Who got sent to the line? Butler. 
first free throw is up and it is in. Second free throw is going to be up and in, spoiler alert. And that's the game. I definitely wanted to watch a final possession, but I went a little bit too long. So, hey, the, the we, got, we got the game sevens. We got the game sevens. Uh, so here we go. The Lakers are up 3-2 to two on the Sacramento Kings. Can the Lakers find themselves in the conference finals again? This game looks like it's going to be heavy Sacramento Kings, and the Kings would be... Okay, I thought they had a chance. The Kings are one game away from also being in the finals. We get these game sevens. Maybe one of them must be good, right? One of these game sevens must be good. Is this one going to be the one? No. No, it's not. LeBron and company continue to fall short. Uh-oh. That, that, that's the third year, third year, fourth year in a row where they've made it this far but never been able to get over the hump. 25-year-old Bron. Now they're starting to talk on ESPN about you, Bron. They're starting to talk. Uh, now this game seven, the uh, a California Classic. We had the Florida Classic earlier in the video. Now we got the Cali flat, uh, Classic. Can the eighth seed, the Cinderella Story team, continue their dominance? They are going to the conference finals. Scotty Barnes and Pau Gasol and Lamar Odom old self are going to. Oh, they also traded for Davion Mitchell at the deadline, by the way. And for some reason, he's still upset. He was upset with the, he was on the Knicks, and he's still upset, even though he's probably starting. I mean, I, I guess that has to do with his touches, but bro, you're not a fish and NBA player. Why would we give you more touches? First game is one. Man, if we see this 8 seed make a, a finals push, oh my God, they're up 2-0. And this was an overtime game where Q Rich did his thing. Triple-double for Powell, including six blocks. Let's get into it, baby. 2-1 series on both sides. 2-2 now. 3-2. Oh, man. Oh, man. They had the 2-0 lead. They had the 2-0 lead. Here we go with the Toronto Raptors make that push. A team that we knew was going to make some adjustments and eventually make it. They are a game away from making it right now. In year two, basically in year two. This is crazy. And the Jazz look like they're going to go out and... Oh, it's close. Stay that way. It's not staying that way. So, the the eight seed of Sacramento Kings, what a great story. Scotty was phenomenal. They could probably convince themselves to buy a little bit um, this year uh, in the offseason. The Utah Jazz finally make an NBA Finals appearance after trading for, for Kobe like three seasons ago. They're finally in the NBA Finals. Who would they go against? It looked like it might be the Toronto Raptors, but with it being a tie game with a minute to go, you know we got to do our part. This is a game seven, ladies and gentlemen. The winner goes to the NBA Finals. We have had some ridiculous series so far, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So I, I want to say I appreciate everybody that's been watching this series uh, because we are, you know, getting great stuff happening every single day. Every single day. Chris Dorte, um, this team looks so much different. Only thing that's still consistent is that Vince Carter and DeAndre Ayton are there. And Karan Butler, who hit a big... Karan Butler hit a very similar three in episode one. In episode one, he hit a very, very similar three. And he just hit the same one. And that could be huge in them finding them way, their way in the NBA Finals. And oh my God, I hate this game. Because they took out Anthony Davis. It's for Brought Anthony Davis at the five if you want to keep Jalen Johnson in the game. Oh, my God. That's so bad. That's so bad. Jamal Murray. See what you can do. He gives it up to Jalen Johnson. He takes the three. Heavily gets us that. He greeted. Well, he didn't greet it, but he hit it. I understand keeping him in the game. Not over Anthony Davis still, though. But he kept him in the game. And, boy, he ties it up after a tough three-pointer was made by him. The Wizards took out Chris uh, J Vince Carter. Giannis is playing lockup defense on Karan. He's trying to get to the basket. Giannis said none of that, and he gets the board. Man, what bad coaching to see the two of the best players in the league just sitting on the bench late in the game. That's also a terrible possession from Giannis. That's sophomore year Giannis. He's making sophomore year Giannis mistakes. What the heck was that? Here we go. 20 seconds to go in the game. They give it up to field, center field with a pass to Karan. This time no good. Rebound to Jante Murray. All right, all right, real quick, I want to take over the Wizards so we can make sure that Vince Carter's in the game for these last possessions because I refuse to have him sitting on the bench. Here we go. Win and go home scenario. Jamal Murray with the ball. Being guarded by center field again. And I see what they do. Um, Waiting pretty long. Here's a screen. 
Four seconds to go. Gives it up to Anthony Davis. A, a grenade. Anthony! No good. He threw Anthony Davis an absolute grenade with three minutes to go. Sheesh. That's awful. <laughs> That's awful. Threw him an absolute grenade. All right. Let's see if overtime is going to be good or will it be a San Antonio Spurs uh, situation where it's not good. Uh, and they, some team just dominates. Let's see. And it's not domination, but it is not very close either. And it looks like the Raptors are advancing to an NBA Finals. Wow. Raptors versus Jazz in the Finals. The Murrays, Giannis, AD, and Nance versus Luka, Cole, Corey Brewer, and Eddie Curry. This one should be good. The Jazz probably have the advantage because they have the two best players on the court at all times. Game one is a Raptor win. Oh snap, game two is a Jazz win. A beautiful, big, leaded Jazz win with seven made threes from Luka. Then the Jazz go again and win another one. Can they get another one? They don't. The Raptors said not so fast, baby. Come on, give me a good game. That is not a good game, but we do see the Jazz go up 3-2. This could be the end of the season right here right now and ladies and gentlemen with a minute and a half to go it is not close so it looks like we will be seeing the utah jazz win their first nba championship with luca and kobe being bryant and it's, it took three years to get there but it was worth it the corey brewer acquisition last season was huge and you can see he has been amazing for them eddie curry has been really consistent all three of these years and they finally get themselves a championship Shaq calls it a career Jason Kidd Jamal Mashburn call it a career Antoine Jameson who spent some time with the Wizards I'm pretty sure I don't know he never was a wizard I thought he was a wizard earlier in the series either way that is the end of the episode ladies and gentlemen if you enjoyed it leave it a like remember Victor Wibanyama will be entering the NBA next episode so be out on the lookout for that I love y'all. See you soon. Peace.